Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4, Drivers of Reactions. This is video number 6 and the first in the second section of this particular uh, module. And now we're going to be using some of what we've uh, already looked at and understood about enthalpy change uh, and today focus on bond breaking and bond making. So let's get into it. So one of the things that we have started to look at is the fact that when we are analyzing chemical reactions, most of the time what we're trying to do is just see what effect a particular uh, chemical process has on its surroundings. And to be able to calculate changes in the energy um, on the basis of uh, recording temperature changes and then look, looking at the relationship with things like specific heat. We've um, done that in terms of the actual reaction, but now we can start to analyze things in a little bit more specific detail by understanding something about the different types of energy associated with different bonds. We're going to focus this section a little bit just on covalent bonds. There are more complex things that we can add in, but for the moment, let's just see if we can focus on one section, get a bit of an idea or understanding of how that works, and then you can apply that into other uh, types of chemical situations. So the first thing we need to be uh, aware of is that different elements have different bond strengths, uh, both between their own atoms and when they form bonds with other atoms. And you can see a table here on the right where we've got bonds between single bonds between carbon and hydrogen, between carbon and carbon, carbon and oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen, and oxygen and oxygen, and also a couple of double bonds between carbon and oxygen and oxygen and oxygen. We can therefore rank uh, different types of bonds on the basis of their strength. We can also use these to determine whether there is a net gain or loss in energy when new substances are formed. When new substances are formed, we need to break a chemical bond, and then we need to make new bonds and in the process of each of these uh, bond breaking and bond making, um, an energy is either going in or becoming available as a result of each of those processes. So it's probably worth just walking through one example to give you a bit of an idea. Consider what happens when we um, carry out an electrolytic decomposition of water. So we know that if we pass an electric current through water, um, particularly water with some hydrogen ions in it, then what we find is that the water will break down through both an oxidation and reduction uh, reactions or half reactions into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The ratio of these is a two to one ratio. But what we want to do now is we want to see if we can go a little bit deeper into what's really going on in this process. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the reactant. The reactant is water. To balance the equation, I needed two water molecules. That's two things that look like this. Each of these has one, two, hydrogen oxygen bonds. So if I have two of them, I have four oxygen hydrogen bonds. So I actually have four of these. So for my reactants, what I need to do is I need to add sufficient energy to break four lots of the 463, which is 1852 kilojoules. Now, when I form the products, that stored energy is in there. And so then I've got an energy, an amount of energy that's been released as a consequence of the formation of these bonds. Our products are going to be two hydrogen hydrogen. So because we've got two hydrogens, each of these is an HH and I've got two of those. And I've got one oxygen double bond to another oxygen. So I need to take all of those into account. When I do this, I have two lots of the hydrogen hydrogen, which is this one. 
and I also have one of the oxygen, double bond oxygen. So I have two lots of 4, 3, 6, and I add in uh, 4, 9, 8, and that gives me a total of 1, 3, 7, 0 oh, kilojoules. Now I can work out the enthalpy change from these bond energies by subtracting the um, bond making energy from the bond breaking energy. So I put the energy in 152, uh, 1852 in order to break those uh, reactant bonds and I subtract the energy that I gain from the formation of the product bonds. What I find is an overall value of 482 kilojoules. You'll also notice that this is a positive value. And a positive value is an indicator of an endothermic reaction. And that's really good because I know this requires an input of energy in the form of electricity for this reaction to occur. So we can use this process of bond energies and bond breaking and bond making as an alternative way to help us calculate the enthalpy change that occurs in chemical reactions. This will need some practice, so you will need to work through some examples in class. So good luck and thanks for watching.